Welcome to the channel everyone. My name is Joe Buskins. This is our family's boat shop and this is part 13 of our custom hard top build that we fabricated here in our family shop from concept to building the plug and mold and it's going to be installed in our 29 foot charter boat that we also built here in our family's boat shop. And we posed the question on the last episode, episode 12, how many pounds do you guys think that this part weighs at finished weight? So today we're going to be answering that question. And I was pleasantly surprised. A lot of you folks were very, very close. And uh, we had guesses kind of all around. No one was extremely low or extremely high. And I thought all of them were good guesses. So what we're going to do, first off, I kind of want to show, um, I want to start off by showing you folks how much I'm going to use myself as some ballast here to show the, the rigidity of this and also Basically, I'm going to weigh myself. I'm going to pick this part up and then I'm going to get them back on the scales and we'll we'll do the math and and make that work. So you guys and gals at home are going to get to find out a little bit more about me personally. We'll let that thing lock in 185.4 pounds. All right, so I'm going to make a note of that 185.4. That's in the blue Columbia shirt and flip flop. So I'm loaded, ready for fishing. I <laughs> got my fishing gear on. So I also, I'm sure some of you folks are wondering how, how durable or how tough this part is. Like how much movement or flex or how strong is this part or how much weight could it support? And that's a valid question. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do this, try to do this without making a fool of myself all right so about 185 pounds and if i put some bounce on that of course we are on plywood saw horses and there's some movement in the horses but not much more than a quarter of an inch or a half an inch at most it doesn't feel like it's moving a say three-quarter marine plywood certainly moves more than this is so that is that three-quarter Arex foam with a biaxial glass and the vinyl ester resin from um, from fiberglass warehouse so it's surprisingly tough and rigid which is why we love the foam core construction now before I pick this thing up. I won't catch my breath a second because it, it's hot out here today, folks. We're still in the middle of August and it's blazing. Um, I did have a lot of other questions about if you were building just a one-off, if you're just building a one-of-a-kind and you didn't want to go through the process of building a plug or a pattern and then a mold and then the molded finished piece, which this results, doing it this way, you've got a very much almost like a factory produced part. It looks very, very nice. Now, on our previous boat, we did a one-off style hardtop for it. And this is the jig or pattern that I used when we were building that part. And you can see what we have here is a series of six two by six frames. And we cut a bit of an arch or curve into those frames. And then you can see here, we just used some ripped down uh, inch and a half by approximately three quarter pieces of nice true straight lumber and we pin nailed everything there at, at kind of the same intervals and that is the curve I wanted the top of my hard top to have and we took a sheet of three quarter inch Divinacell foam core and when we laid it on there it kind of took took the curve just like this piece of plywood is and we took that same little pin nailer and put a handful of just enough pin nails in there to get that piece of Divinacell to lay down and hold the shape. Now, once it was pin nailed down there, we did one layer of 1708 biaxial glass. We also used vinyl ester resin on that hardtop because I want it to be really strong for its weight. And once that 1708 and vinyl ester had cured, I took the reverse cutouts of these frames and you can see actually this one is numbered number one there's a number two so I kept them and matched them to the frame while it's still pin nailed down after the fiberglass had cured I actually took a little bit of the pro strand which y'all have seen me use before push down on this and put just a little tab of pro strand to bond these reverse pieces 
back to the foam core. After that was done, we were actually able to just pry that piece of foam with the frames off of this jig and flip it over. We laid this on a big flat table so it was nice and true. And then we put one layer of 1708 biaxial on the other side um, to give it some strength. Now, once both sides of glass had cured, y'all will notice that I only put the putty on one side, not on the other. Any of you welders out there know that a lot of times if you only weld on one side, it's real easy to hit it from the opposite direction and break it loose, break those little tabs or tacks loose. At that point, I had made this plywood template that was the exact shape of the hard top and I basically overlaid it over the full four by eight sheet and traced it out, cut it out, rounded the edges. And then what we did is we came back over it with one more layer of one ounce CSM. And what we did is we came over the edges and just let it overlap on the bottom. We let that cure, we turned it over and we glassed from the top and let it roll over the edge again. And it gave me a surprisingly strong and fairly simple to build. Now it didn't look as technical or as pretty as this part. It was a little more rough, rough finish and you didn't have this nice finished edge on it. But we used it for several years on our previous charter boat with people hanging on to it and going through all kind of weather, several hundred fishing trips on that, that top and never had any issue. So I may build something in the future and I hope that condensed version and you folks seeing this pattern and this jig and these frames gives you maybe some idea. I know a lot of folks are looking at building canopies for like um, farm equipment. Maybe if you want to build something for a tractor or a gator or maybe an off-road type vehicle. Um, had somebody said they wanted to ride this thing down a hill, a, uh, <laughs> use it for a sled or a toboggan. I thought that was pretty awesome. This thing would go like a rocket. And honestly, I don't see why you couldn't build something like that if you, you know, use your imagination there, but certainly so. So, okay, so we're going back to picking this thing up. And I'm, what I'm going to do, basically, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to reset, reset our scales. We're at 185.4 pounds. Let's see if we can get an accurate weight here. And I'm going to do this carefully. All right, let's take my time, see if I can do this without risking life or limb. Let that thing zero out. All right, 257.8. Two fifty-seven. Two fifty-seven point eight. Oh, that got my glasses all wonky. <laughs> Ooh, that was hard. All right, two fifty-seven point eight. So, all right, let me do the math here, and some of you folks may be ahead of me already. The anticipation build. So we'll start at 257.8 minus 185.4 equals 72.4 pounds. So I'm curious, are y'all surprised? That's 72.4 pounds for a really nice custom hardtop that I guarantee you this thing is going to be plenty durable to last me for years of service. Um, I think a lot of you folks are going to be surprised. Honestly, most of the numbers were higher than that, the guesstimates. And uh, that is why building a molded part with biaxial glass and using a premium vinyl ester resin like from the folks at Fiberglass Warehouse and of course, again, the Airx foam core is what we use, but Divinacel or Clegicel, there's a number of other Diab, there's a number of other cores that could certainly work. So I hope y'all found that little experiment interesting. And I want to let y'all know that we do have some really cool 
projects coming up. We've got our 21 foot center console blazer project boat that if you go back several episodes prior to us starting this series, we had two episodes kind of just introducing you to that boat and showing you, but it's gonna be stringers, floor, transom, bow deck, motor installation, lots of damage on the console that's gotta be repaired. And we will probably be jumping back and be touching bases on some product reviews. Um, we used to do a lot of that, different resins, putties, fillers. I've got some new materials that I'm pretty excited about showcasing for you folks at home. And then we have been adding a handful of fishing episodes. Usually it's with me and my brother and my son, Logan. We go out and do some family trips and kind of showcase how our 29, our custom 29 performs uh, out in the Gulf of Mexico and during some of our family fishing trips. And we've got a cool episode. Me and Logan went out, caught some really cool fish, one of my favorites. And we actually did a cook episode on there. And I'm gonna introduce y'all to some of my other, one of my other family members, very special to me. So uh, I wanna thank y'all sincerely from my heart as well. We recently reached 50,000 subscribers to the channel, which is a huge landmark. And we couldn't have done it without y'all's help and support. And uh, not just here in the States, but internationally, a lot of folks from the UK and from Australia and uh, all over the world. I, hard to name everybody, but I don't want anybody to feel left out. And I genuinely appreciate your support. So it's Captain Joe Buskins here with Island Marine Charters, Fish Bump TV on YouTube, my amazing cameraman working hard behind the scenes. And as always, we will catch you folks next time out.